Hello viewers, I am back with a new video tutorial on laboratory hazards. This video is mainly for the DMLT and BMLT students. This video will describe what are laboratory hazards, enumerate different types of laboratory hazards, enlist different types of safety precautions in the laboratory. Now, what are laboratory hazards or what is laboratory hazard? Any type of injury or risk or potential source of harm a person is exposed while working in a laboratory is called laboratory hazard. There are three basic type of laboratory hazard. These are chemical hazard, physical hazard and biological hazard. Now let us see what are those and how can we safeguard ourselves from this three major type of hazards. Chemical hazards. This is again of various types. To start with Flammables, the chemical which ignites or burns. Example, acetone and toluene. This is the logo. The container is marked with if it falls under the category of flammables. Then is corrosive. A chemical that causes visible damage or irreversible alterations in living tissue if it comes in contact with our skin, epidermis. These are nitric acid, sulfuric acid and strong alkalis. A highly corrosive chemical is supposed to have a pH of 2 or less or a pH of 12.5 or more. This is the logo for corrosive substances. Toxic. A toxic substance is a substance that can be poisonous and cause deleterious health effects. Example, potassium cyanide. This is the logo for toxic hazard. Now, what are other types of chemical hazard? Irritant. The chemical which causes irritation and inflammation of skin mucous membrane, respiratory tract mucosa if it is inhaled, example ammonia vapor. Harmful, the chemical when ingested can cause deleterious effect on health, example copper sulfate or blue vitriol. This is the logo for harmful substances. Explosive, the chemical which explodes by heat, flame, etc. Example, perchloric acid. This is the logo for explosives. Now, let us see how can we safeguard ourselves against this chemical hazards. The safety precautions against chemical hazards. The bottle containing chemicals should be clearly labeled with appropriate logo. As I have clearly demonstrated the logo for each and every subtype of chemical hazard. Keep the bottles in use on shelves lower than eye level. Whenever you need to dilute an acid, you need to add acid slowly to water, preferably while cooling and stirring in continuity. Never add water to acid. Never keep acids and alkalis in bottles with ground glass stoppers as they may get stuck and you may mess up while opening the bottles. Mouth pipetting should not be done. Use measuring cylinders for acid and alkali 
volumetric estimation. If more accurate measurement is required, use a pipette plugged with non-absorbent cotton wool or with a rubber stock. Organic solvents having toxic fumes should be used in fume hood with good ventilation. Whenever pouring or using organic solvents for laboratory tests. If this organic solvents fall on the skin, wash off with soap and water. Precautions should be taken in using reagents having carcinogenic potential. One of the commonly used reagent is ninhydrin that is used for amino acid chromatography. And if you see the bottle, it is seen to have carcinogenic potential. So keep them in bottles labeled as carcinogen and avoid direct contact with the skin. Whenever you are handling, use rubber or plastic gloves. Now, these are the safety measures. So, if any accident occurs, that is if any acid splash or alkali splash occur, what should we do? In case of acid splash, wash the area with 5% aqueous sodium carbonate solution and in case of alkali splash, Wash that skin area with 5% acetic acid solution after washing thoroughly with water. Physical hazards. Now what are physical hazards? Hazards caused by physical agents. Fire due to frequent uses of matches, open flames and highly inflammable substances like acetone, toluene, fire hazards can occur. Electric hazard. Now we are in the generation of automation. Most of the instrument require electricity for their functioning. So electrical hazard can occur by touching the switch with wet hands, accidental spillage of water on electrical wire or extension cords. So we must be very careful in day-to-day -day laboratory work. Safety measures against physical hazard. Electrical plug points should be separate for each equipment and easily approachable. No inflammable liquid or gas should be kept near the appliances that are electrically operated. Moreover, the instrument must be switched off from the wall socket. Lead of instrument should not be open until it has been disconnected from the power supply. Why so? Unpleasant sensations are felt at low current even at 1 milliampere AC current or 5 milliampere DC current. Personal protective Gears like goggles and glasses should be worn during visualizing object under ultraviolet light. That means wavelength under 400 nanometer like during the use of trans illuminator. Ultraviolet light may cause corneal and conjunctival damage to the eyes of the laboratory personnel. Lastly, we come to the biological hazard. Hazards occurred by different biological agents. This is the most common type of hazard that a laboratory personnel is exposed every minute because we are dealing with biological samples. The infective hazards may occur during accidental needle prick injury, during phlebotomy procedure and these are blood-borne viral hepatitis, AIDS and HIV infection. Blood, body fluids and biological tissues for histopathological examination can even cause serious infection. So we must be careful while we are handling this biological specific. Safety measures against biological hazards. Always use gloves in the laboratory. Never touch any biological specimen with nude hands and you can use 
even other protective gears as per the requirement. Use pipettes for transferring the serum, plasma or fluids for storage, transportation or testing procedure. Never pip go for mouth pipetting. Hand washing before and after handling of sample. As per guidelines, every lab should have charts or posters showing the steps of hand washing. Moreover, for uh, blood, uh, blood vials disposal that should be autoclaved before disposal as per biomedical waste disposal guideline. So, these are the safety measures against biological hazards. What are the precautionary measures? Every laboratory personnel should get himself or herself vaccinated against hepatitis B virus and there should be serial monitoring of anti-hepatitis B virus antibody titer in the laboratory personnel and he or she should get booster dose as per requirement. Regarding the physical hazard, fire hazard, as per various accreditation body, every laboratory should have a training for safety and management of fire hazard and each and every laboratory should have its own extinguisher installed at appropriate positions. Moreover, previously when radioimmunoassay was used in the laboratory for hormone or tumor marker estimation, radiation hazard was another type of hazard a laboratory personnel was exposed to. Radiation hazard is defined as a risk to health consisting of or resulting from the presence of ionizing radiation. Ionizing radiation weakens and breaks up the DNA and has carcinogenic potential. Use of shields and containment to reduce exposure are the preventive measures. However, nowadays radioimmunoassay is almost obsolete in most of the labs. So, we are hardly exposed but people who are working in diagnostic centers like x-ray, CT scan, they are exposed to radiation hazards. To aid is human. That means human being can make mistake but human beings are blessed with equality to rectify themselves. So, management of a blood or body fluid in the uh, spillage in the laboratory is a common error that can occur by anyone but we should manage it properly. Now let us check what are the steps. This is a spillage in the laboratory area or we can see this is blood spillage. What next? Keep other persons away from the spillage and stop the work you are doing. Wear the personal protective equipments like gloves, mask, apron and take out the spillage kit. As per various accreditation bodies, every laboratory should have its own spillage kit for the management. The spillage kit should consist of tongs, waste paper bags, paper towels, hypochlorite solution and personal protective equipment and a spillage register to record the incident. Next, we should use paper towels that is cover the area with disposable paper towels so that it soaks the blood or body fluid and remove the sodden material as per waste segregation policies of biomedical waste disposal rule disposal rule 2016 then again we should keep some new paper towels and spray with hypochlorite solution what should be the strength of the hypochlorite solution 1% with 
5000 parts per million of available chlorine this is as per cdc guideline 2003 and we should keep keep this hypochlorite soden towel for at least 20 to 30 minutes and then we should dispose the soden towels the gloves the mask apron in appropriate bags as per waste segregation policy wash and dry our hands now suppose there is spillage of a blood sample of a person whose test has not been done then what next we should record the incident in a blood spillage register inform the patient and apologize for the event and collect the fresh sample if required so these are the steps we should take for management of blood or body fluid spillage in laboratory workstation thank you for watching and stay tuned for new videos if you like my channel then do hit the bell icon for getting notification of any videos that has been uploaded and like share and subscribe keep watching